Hello friends, this is Anirban. Welcome to the tutorial session of the fourth week of this course. In this session, we are going to summarize everything that has been covered in the course and learn how to solve problems in the exam. So let us see what all topics we are going to cover today. Today we are going to first cover estimation of probabilities using the frequency definition. of probability. The second topic will be Bayes rule. The third topic is maximum a posteriori probability inference. Fourth will be naive Bayes assumption. The fifth topic will be Bayesian networks. The structure of Bayesian networks, what it is all about. Sixth will be inference in Bayesian network and the concept of marginalization. So, let us take up the first topic of today, which is estimation of probabilities using the frequency definition. The frequency definition of probability says that uh, the probability of an event is the fraction of times that particular event happened. For example, we have a fair coin, say we toss it 100 times and 45 times the heads come up, head side comes up and 55 of the of time uh, and the remaining 55 times the tail shows up. Okay? So, the probability of head will be 45 by 100 or 0 0.45 and the probability of tails will be 55 by 100 which is 0 0.55. Okay? And uh, so, let us take up a problem which you can face in the exam and try to solve it. Suppose you have an urn with 10 balls of different color. There are three red balls, four blue balls and three yellow balls. estimate the probability of drawing a red, blue and yellow ball. So, you have been given an urn which has balls of three different colors and now you have been asked to just close your eyes and pick up a ball at random. So, what is the probability that you would pick a red ball, what is the probability of a blue ball and what is the probability of a yellow ball. So, from the frequency definition probability of a given color will be number of balls of that color in the urn divided by total number of balls in the urn. Okay? So, probability therefore, probability 
of red of drawing a red ball is equal to 3 times right because there are 3 red balls. So, 3 divided by all together it is 3 plus 4 7 plus 3 10 total number of balls is 10 or 0 0.3 probability of blue equal to there are 4 blue balls. So, 4 divided by 10 is equal to 0 0.4 probability of yellow will be equal to 3 since there are 3 yellow balls divided by the total number of balls which is 10 okay, which is equal to 0 0.3. You add these 3 things up 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 is 1. Okay. So, this is how you calculate the probability using the frequency definition. Let us go to the next topic, which is the Bayes rule. The Bayes rule of probability says that suppose we have two random variables x and y. Then probability of y given x. Suppose that you have been uh, given a particular value of x and then asked what the most probable value of y should be or what is the probability of different values of y given a particular value of x. So, probability of y given x will be equal to probability of x given y into probability of y divided by probability of x. Now, each of this is the Bayes rule. Okay. So, this is called the rather the entire thing it is called the Bayes rule of probability. Now, each of these terms in the Bayes rule has a name p of x given y this quantity it is called the likelihood. The likelihood of x given y. The term p of y it is called the prior. Okay. So, you when you are asking what is the probability of a certain value of y, you would like to know what was the prior probability of y that is without any given information what how likely how how probable that particular value of y is. So, that is the prior probability and the denominator it is called p of x this is called evidence. Okay. So, when you are giving a value of x you are also going to say that how uh, common that particular value of x is. So, that acts like an evidence. So, this particular term is called the evidence. Okay. So, this is the Bayes rule. Now, let us go ahead and see what kind of problems can come in the exam from this part. So, you will be given the value of different um, you will be given this these quantities okay, and you will be asked uh, to put these things in formula and ask and, uh, and do a you know Bayes estimation maximum a posterior probability estimation. So, let us talk about it next. So, um, given that so this is a question that can come in the exam given that p of um, so let us let us go to a new page and see what kind of problem can come in the exam. Bayes rule continued. Suppose you have been given two random variables x and y, which are Boolean. So, Boolean random variables are those which can take values either 0 or 1 that is can take values in 0 1. Okay. Also, 
probability of x equal to 0 is 0 0.2, probability x equal to 1 is 0 0.8, probability y equal to 0 is 0 0.6, probability y equal to 1 is 0 0.4, probability of x equal to 0 given now, you are given a table okay, of the conditional probability distributions. So, here you have y equal to 0, you have y equal to 1, x equal to no, the other way around. Um, yeah. hmm. Say x equal to 0 and x equal to 1, you have been given this table, y equal to 0, y equal to 1 and this quantity is probability of x given y. Okay. So, whatever your entry is coming here is going to be probability of x given y. So, probability of x equal to 0 given y equal to 0 is say 0 0.25 probability of x equal to 1 given y equal to 0 is 0 0.75. So, these two terms should add to 1. Probability of x equal to 0 given y equal to 1 says it is 0 0.45 and this is 0 0.55. Okay. So, this is given to you and you have been asked what should be the probability of y equal to 1 given x equal to 0. Okay. So, what is this quantity? So, uh, you can directly use Bayes rule over here. How do you solve? So, probability solution is y equal to 1 given x equal to 0 is equal to probability of x equal to 0 given y equal to 1 into probability of y equal to 1 divided by probability of x equal to 0, which is equal to probability of x equal to 0 is this 0 0.2 probability of x equal to 0 given y equal to 1 is x equal to 0 given y equal to 1 okay is this quantity 0 0.45 times probability of y equal to 1 probability of y equal to 1 is 0 0.4 so just shift the points this is 2 and 0 0.45 into 2 is 0 0.9. Perfect. So, the probability, so this is your answer. Okay. So, the probability of, so this is how you solve using the Bayes rule. Okay. The probability of y equal to 1 given x equal to 0 is equal to 0 0.9. So, you will be asked this kind of questions in the exam from the Bayes rule. Pretty simple, right. The next topic that we will take up is map inference. So, I will spell it out, it is maximum a posteriori probability estimation. Okay. So, the maximum a posteriori probability estimation is also known as map inference. Okay, or map estimation, okay. rather I should say inference. So, it is the, it goes like this. So, you have been given that uh, again the same let us let us have the same same problem statement as before. Okay. Suppose, you have been given two random variables x and y which are boolean and takes values in 0 and 1 and this is the different prior probabilities, evidences and the conditionals, the uh, likelihood of x given y and you have been asked to find out. Uh, so, given this condition, given a particular value of x, what is the most probable value of y. So, I am going to fold this in half and keep it like, like this. Let me fold it again. Okay. So, now you have 
the problem. Okay. So, this is the scenario. I hope you can see it. Yes, now you should be able to see it. And this is your statement, and you have been asked that given this scenario and a value of x, given x equal to 0, which value of y is the most probable. All right. So, the map probability map estimation would go like this it returns. So, by map inference rule um, the most probable y is given by y star equal to arg max over y taking values in 0 and 1 probability of y given x okay or i should write probability of y equal to y given x equal to 0 okay so this you are trying to you are going to choose that particular value of y which has the maximum posterior probability given the value of x okay so this is the basic philosophy and in this case you will find as we calculated before that you are going to find out so we calculated that probability of y equal to 1 given x equal to 0 is 0 0.9 all right so it is going to be arg max or rather yes. So, it is going to be equal to arg max y belonging to, to 0 and 1 of probability of y equal to 0 given x equal to 0 and arg max over y. So, I will write small y okay. and probability y equal to 1 given x equal to 0. All right. So, this quantity was calculated to be 0 0.9 right was calculated to be 0 0.9 before and similarly, we can calculate this as 0 0.1 and so, which value of y gives uh, more value more uh, the maximum probability maximum posterior probability y equal to 0 right. So, this is going to be 0. All right. So, the most probable value of y given this particular value of x is 0. So, this is how map inference goes okay. and uh, this is theoretically the best possible inference. Okay. So, uh, given all the all the estimation uh, given the likelihoods which comes from domain knowledge and the priors which also come from the domain knowledge and the problem definition the um, best you can predict is by this rule. Okay. So, you are going to find out that particular value of the output which is the most probable given the input. In this context another important uh, topic which comes in is the knife base assumption. So, what does the knife base assumption say? The knife base assumption says that knife base assumption. This is a conditional independence assumption. So, the knife base assumption says that. So, this is the statement of knife base the input features are conditionally independent given 
a target value. So, this is important. Okay. So, if you say that uh, I am sure that the target is going to take a particular value say 0. Okay. Given that the target has been prefixed to a given value, the, the all the input parameters, the input variables or the input features become conditionally independent. So, this is the naive base assumption. So, how does it look in the math look like in the mathematics side? So, it says like says this says that uh, suppose the input is described by a feature vector x, which is a vector x 1, x 2 till x n and where x i is i equal to 1 through n are different input features. So, let the um, output or target variable b d y okay then probability of x this vector given a particular value of y it's going to be so all the um, variable so what is this so this is basically a co-occurrence of all of these random variables right so a joint probability distribution of all of these random variables so this can be approximated as a product of the um, condition uh, the the um, conditional probability distributions of each of these features okay given the value of y so i equal to 1 through n p of x i given y equal to y all right so you just assumed that all of these input features become conditionally independent when a particular value of the target variable is given so this is the knife base assumption it's very helpful in certain scenarios but often is not right to assume knife base assumption okay yes so uh, what kind of problems can come from this section um, you will be given a certain scenario all right so maybe you can you have already seen the uh, hands on exercise python exercise and there we used knife based assumption to uh, classify emails as spam or non spam right there we had assumed that given y equal to say now let's uh, let's take up that problem again all right so what kind of assumption was done there in that case so, in our, so if you have missed this video, then go ahead and uh, look at assignment or like exercise, hands on exercise number 3 uh, or week 4 hands on exercise as will be easier for you to find out in the course website. So, we are going to take up that example again and reconsider it for a moment. Um, in our spam classification example each email was described as a vector of x's okay where sorry where each x i was a word um, which is significant in deciding spam or non spam okay so given that and uh, given this kind of input descriptions and the target value was y which can take values either in spam or non spam okay 
So, the naive phase assumption says that would uh, like following the naive phase assumption, we wrote that um, by naive base, we wrote that probability of x given spam. So, given that the mail is spam, the value of the output is known. So, this is going to be the product over all the different words of probability of that particular word occurring in a spam email. All right. So, this is quite straightforward and it is helpful in many machine learning scenarios. Okay. And particularly when um, you do not want to have too many parameters, because you do not have too much too much data. And if you are not going to, uh, if you do not assume, if you do not assume the uh, knife base assumption, if you do not consider the knife base assumption, then there might be too many parameters in um, modeling or describing the joint distribution of the features. Okay. So, in those scenarios, the knife base assumption becomes quite handy. In the exam, you will be given uh, certain values of the input and certain values of the output okay, and you will be asked to calculate a joint distribution. So, you will basically be asked to calculate this okay, using naive base assumption. All right. Now, maybe this particular this is just the likelihood part. right? So, this particular likelihood part will be asked to estimate using the naive base assumption and you may be have to uh, plug it into the base rule to calculate the posterior distribution. And from there once, the have, once you have the posterior distributions ready at your hand, you can make a map inference okay, about the most probable value of y for a given value of the input variables x like you did in the spam classifier. right? So, let us move on to the next topic, which is Bayesian networks. Bayesian network is a probabilistic graphical model and it is a probabilistic graphical model and it models conditional probability distribution among the random variables. Okay. So, how does the base net look like? Say you have four random variables. again for boolean random variables makes life simpler a b c and d and a base net would look something like this this is a base net okay and each of the so each of these uh, head nodes the ones that come before that come in the beginning all right they have these prior probability distributions so you have the prior probability distributions of uh, a and b and all the remaining mm -hmm. nodes will have conditional distributions of uh, those of their values given the values of the parents the immediate parents okay so, for C, you will have probability of C given A and B and for D, you are going to have probability of D given C. Now, the Bayesian network, this theory says that uh, if the variables can be represented in the form of a Bayesian network of in this form, in, uh, then the joint probability distribution of the random variables can be written as a product of the priors and the conditionals. So, this gives a very elegant way of modeling the joint probability distributions okay. and also sometimes leads to the use of much smaller number of parameters and hence chances of overfitting are also reduced. So, um, 
Bayes nets are extremely helpful in making full um, models of variables which are highly interlinked among each other and uh, it also gives a very systematic and methodical way of modeling and uh, there could be and base nets could be built automatically okay in a data driven fashion or it could be handcrafted as well and it's widely used in the industry okay in the machine learning community so um, from bayesian networks so what kind of questions can come from bayesian networks the first question that can come is uh, given a certain so this base net will be given okay the prior distributions will be given the conditionals will be given and you will be asked to calculate the um, joint distribution of these random variables okay so say the probability of a so let's write down some values okay say probability of a equal to 0 is 0 0.2 probability of a equal to 1 is 0. 8 probability of b equal to 0 is 0 0.6 probability of b equal to 1 is 0 0.4 and um, this cpd is also given so this will be there will be f uh, this will be a big table so i'll tell you so say this is like a and b and these are the different values of c equal to 0 and c equal to 1 and let's and this a and b values so what i'm writing here is probability of c given a and b okay so this quantity is going to be for 0 0 a equal to 0 b equal to 0 say probability of c equal to 0 is 0 0.2 this is 0 0.8 say for 0 1 it's 0 0.6 0 0.4 say for 1 0 it is 0 0.3 0 0.7 say for 1 1 it is 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay and also probability of t given c this will be given in the exam okay in the question so d equal to 0 d equal to 1 and c equal to 0 c equal to 1 so probability of d equal to 0 given c equal to 0 say this is 0 0.1 0 0.9 and this is 0 0.9 0 0.1 okay let's have this kind of a distribution so uh, you have been asked to calculate uh, given this model of probability suppose you have been asked to calculate probability of a equal to 0 b equal to 1 c equal to 0 d equal to 1 okay you will be give, given this kind of questions so what will this be this is going to be probability so as i said before so uh, so i'll tell you how how to solve this problem in a very elegant and nice way okay so you draw the decision tree the sorry the base net back again draw the base net again you draw the nodes now and it's always good to use different colors while solving this question now the question says that the uh, the values of the variables will be like this so a is going to take a value of 0 b is going to take 1 c is going to be 0 d is going to be 1 okay and so you write these values and now you look up the tables and find out so probability of a equal to 0 is 0 0.2 okay so you write 0 0.2 here so this is p of a p of b b is going to be 1 okay so it's 0 0.4 probability of c <coughs> given a equal to 0 b equal to 1 probability of c equal to 0 <coughs> probability of c equal to 0 given a equal to 0 b equal to 1 so this entry is what i what we are looking for okay so c equal to 0 given a equal to 0 b equal to 1 yeah so this is going to be 0 0.6 <coughs> now d equal to 1 given c equal to 0 d equal to 1 given c equal to 0 this quantity all right so this is going to be 0 0.9 now you multiply all of them together so all we are going to do is to do this product all right this product and the values have been noted down here so you simply multiply these values so this is going to be equal to 0 0.2 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 times 0. Point, oops i'm sorry 0 0.9 yes multiply this out this is going to be the value all right this is going to be the answer 
ok answer just multiply and find the value ok. So, this kind of questions is going to come. Now, suppose you do not know the value of c ok. So, this is one question. The second question that can come from this part is you have been asked just this part let me write in blue again p of a equal to 0 b equal to 1 and d equal to 0 say uh, d equal to 1 I am sorry let us keep d equal to 1 ok. So, this has been asked what is this. So, this is basically uh, asking for probability of a b and d right which is equal to summation over c taking values in 0 and 1 of probability of a b c equal to c and d right. So, you are marginalizing. So, this particular thing is called marginalization of a probability distribution. So, you are marginalizing c out you are sum, summing it up over all the all the different values of c ok and all you end up with is with the rest of the variables ok this is d. So, uh, suppose you have been given this question. So, how what you are going to do? So, this quantity is going to be equal to p of a equal to 0, b equal to 1, d equal to 1, first c equal to 0 and then another term a equal to 0, b equal to 1, c equal to 1, d equal to 1 right. We are marginalizing c out, we are summing it up over summing the terms probability values for its different values for the different values of c. So, this quantity as we calculated before is 0 point this quantity right. So, this plus this quantity all right. So, whatever this number is I do not have a calculator right now. So, just calculate this. So, this comes and sits here plus you calculate the in this quantity in the same way as before. So, you calculate um, so, what is this going to be? So, this will result in a base net which looks like this. Now, the values are 0, 1, c equal to 1 and d is also equal to 1. So, the priors will be 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 will be, but this conditional will change. So, probability of c equal to 1 given a equal to 0 and b equal to 1, c equal to 1 given a equal to 0, b equal to 1 is 0 0.4 ok. So, the value here will be 0 0.4 and the probability of d equal to 1 given c equal to 1 is 0 0.1 right. So, just go and put 0 0.1 here all right. So, this is going to be equal to. So, let me write it down 0 0.2 into 0 0.4 into 0 0.6 into 0 0.9 this quantity plus this is going to be 0 0.2 into 0 0.4 into 0 0.4 into 0 0.1. So, you add these two up the answer is there ok. So, you will be asked this kind of questions all right. So, that uh, the topics that we covered today are um, estimation of probability using the frequency definition very very basic and the most important uh, Bayes rule map inference knife Bayes assumption Bayesian networks a structure of Bayesian networks what it does it models the conditional probability distributions and also the conditional independences condi conditional independence dependence ad assumptions rather. Then we also discussed how to do inference in a base net. So, given certain values of its of the random variables, how to calculate the joint probability distribution, and also what how to do the marginalization over different variables which have not been asked in the question, and give an inference for the joint distribution of a subset of the variables of the base net. So, this is the content that was covered this week all the questions in the assignment 4 are going to come from these topics. So, best of luck uh, for, uh, for solving the assignment and the deadline will not be extended. So, make it very make it make sure that you uh, start you know early enough and you finish before the deadline which as which will not be extended by any means all right and um, practice this problems for the exam because you are going to get um, quite similar questions. So, bye bye see you next time.